is Neil Malik from Knack Training. And in today's Everyday Office, I'm going to show you two different ways of using icons as part of your charting uh, to make more interesting infographics or dashboards or whatever you want to call your visualizations. As you can see here, I've got a, a simple little table for all of the website visits, YouTube videos, and Facebook videos that have been watched. And, you know, I might decide to make this into a chart. So if I highlight that data, go up here to my column chart types and grab maybe a 2D bar chart, I'll go with a 2D bar chart that is stacked. Now, the reason I'm going to do this is because I want to illustrate year by year what our breakdown looks like in terms of traffic. So I'm going to go stacked, and then I'm going to go with the design tab up here at the top of the screen and switch my rows and columns up. And as you can see, what that does is it takes my chart and makes it so that I can see what percentage or what component of the fiscal year 2016 traffic came from my website versus YouTube videos versus Facebook videos. And that's good, um, definitely. But something that can add a little bit of visual pop to it is to use little icons of people. Uh, so what we're going to do first is make these little um, bars, make them substantially larger. So click directly onto those bars. You can use the keyboard shortcut Control-1, uh, which will allow you to format that bar. And then you can just change the gap width here, maybe down to somewhere around 50% or so. As you can see, that makes them substantially taller, easier to see. And now we want to introduce our people icons. Now you could build your own people icon if you want, um, but if you have some of the latest versions of Excel, maybe just 2016, um, you also have the ability to insert <clears throat> uh, icons directly from the insert tab. So on the insert tab at the top of the screen, I have icons sitting right here. I'm just going to click on the icons and as you can see the very first icon is a really simple person icon. Now I, I could go with the multiple people icon or I could go with you know, multiple multiple people icon. You know what, let's do that. Let's do this one right here with, with several people in it of different genders. Okay, so I select an icon and click insert and uh, you know it just makes a little, whoops, makes a little icon that is sitting on the spreadsheet there. Obviously I was still selected on the chart. Let's do that one more time. Insert to icons and grab one of these people. Let's grab those people and insert. Okay, so I've got this icon now and it's really very, very simple for me to replace the blue bars with these people. Uh, but the first thing I need to do is think about what color I want these people to be. You know, maybe I want the blue for my website and orange for YouTube and gray for Facebook or, you know, whatever color scheme makes me happy. I also want to make sure that when I introduce these graphics, I recognize that the gaps the, the vertical gap above here, the horizontal gap here on the side, those are also going to space these out substantially. So I'm going to take the time to go to my graphics tools up here at the top of the screen, and I'm going to fill in the graphics with a color that makes me happy. Maybe my website should be kind of like a simple gray color. And I'm also going to take the time to crop it. So I click on the crop button, and I just make sure that I get it nice and tight around these people. Now I'll probably want to spend more time getting it just right, but for the time being, let's imagine that this is good enough. And I go ahead and deselect, and my information has been cropped down to just this type of icon. Let's crop it on the sides just a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so now my graphic is gray, it's cropped down, and here's how easy it is to use this. Control C on my keyboard copies those people. I click on the uh, bar here for my website, and I use Control V to paste. Now at first, it takes those people and stretches them so that they fill that space accurately. But if I take a second and use the keyboard shortcut Control 1, 
I can now go over here to my paint bucket, which tells me how the uh, bars are being filled in. And I can see that what it's deciding to do with this graphic is to actually stretch these people out. I'm going to tell it to stack these people, and you can see now how cleanly this fits into the space. Now all I have to do is go back to those original people, and now if I'm talking about YouTube visits, I can click onto those people, choose a color for those people of uh, something like a deep red, you know, because YouTube is, is a red website. Copy those people, click on the YouTube part of the bars, paste it in there. Again, you can see it stretching and squishing those people, so let's click on to that click on the paint bucket and tell it to stack those people. And then one last time, Facebook is of course a kind of a pale blue color, a medium blue color. So let's find a nice medium blue for Facebook to fill those people in with. Copy, click on the gray parts of the bar and paste. And one last time, go to my paint bucket and stack those people instead of stretching them. And just like that, I have a chart that illustrates where the traffic of my company comes from based off of the website, YouTube, and Facebook in each of my different fiscal years. It's a nice interesting graphical uh, take on things. And again, you could have designed these icons yourself, but you know, if you don't have to, it's really nice to be able to grab them from someplace else. Now there's another way to use a graphic of a person as well. Uh, here's how I would do this. So over here I have my littler table based off of the ability to show just one of the years. And maybe this is for simplicity's sake, the ability to go back to 2014 or the ability to go back to 2015 and see these numbers change. I'm going to go ahead and highlight these numbers. Go back to insert at the top of my screen, and I'm going to go with a column chart this time. Now, of course, because it's just three numbers, this is a very, very simple chart. And I'm going to take a second and resize this and take some of the stuff off of it. There we go. Sort of place it in a good spot for me. Now there's plenty of graphics out there where they fill up, um, you know, some sort of silhouette, right? Uh, maybe a person silhouette, it might be a thermometer silhouette, you know, things like that. And so what we can do here is introduce those silhouettes, whether it's a thermometer or a battery or stars to give you ratings or whether it's um, people to represent how many people are visiting whatever the case may be. But what we have to do to make that work is to create, a, um, to create a mask out of that. And so in PowerPoint or Photoshop, you can use one of those icons to basically cut a person or a battery out of a blank white graphic. Let me show you what mine looks like here. If I go to insert up at the top of my screen and I insert a new picture, you'll see that I've created these graphics based off the Microsoft icons. That's all I did is I just grabbed the Microsoft icons and I cut them out of a white background in Photoshop, but you could have done the same thing in PowerPoint. So here I have a person. Now notice that while it was black on the uh, preview screen, that actually this graphic is basically a white panel with a hole cut in it. Very, very simple. So now we're going to resize this person down so that they cover the right amount of the chart. There we go. Beautiful. And so now all we have to do to finish this off is sort of get this person centered, duplicate that person, right? So line it up just the same way with YouTube videos over here. Okay, duplicate. 
And now these columns, they need to increase in size. So we're going to go to the chart. We're going to click on the chart, go to the format tab at the top of the screen and switch over to your series. And now we can click on format selection. And what we need out of this series is to decrease the gap width so the column width increases and it fills up that person correctly, just like so. Now we can go a step further again. Remember, if we click directly onto one of those, so let's move this out of the way, click onto one of these values, I can say website visits again were gray. I can say that YouTube video views were red. And I can say that Facebook video views were medium blue. Oops. Just like that. And so as long as these people are sitting on top of these bars correctly, lined up really nicely, go. All we have to do is continue to watch this as we make our chart fluctuate. We can see how much YouTube versus Facebook versus the website counts for us and it fills up the legs of the people all the way up to the shoulders and then the head. And so you can use that same icon graphic as a silhouette or as something to fill in to a bar chart or column chart, something along those lines.